Hello, I'm V.B. Price. I'm the editor of NewMexicoMercury.com. I'm here today in the Mercury Library with poet and slam champion Jessica Helen Lopez, who was selected recently to be Albuquerque's second poet laureate. And what a wonderful thing it is for a city like ours to have a poet laureate at all. It's a great thing. Um, New Mexico has been blessed with exceptionally active and inclusive laureates here in Santa Fe with Hakeem Bellamy and, and Joan Logie uh, in Santa Fe. And I'm uh, sure that, uh, that there is a move at work now in the state legislature where there will be a New Mexico poet laureate probably next year. Um, anyone who has seen Jessica Lopez perform or who has read her poems knows that she will bring an incredible energy and intensity to the role, the social role, I guess we'd have to call it, a poet laureate in Albuquerque. Um, we are, as almost everybody who reads uh, The Mercury knows, I'm sure, uh, we have more poets per square inch here than almost any other place in the world, I think. Uh, and the clue to how, how Jessica looks at the role, I think, is to be found in, in her membership uh, in the, uh, uh, the Macondo uh, Foundation, which is an, an association of socially engaged writers united to advance creativity, foster generosity, and honor community, which I believe were her words. It's just wonderful to have you here with us today, and we're totally delighted to get to hear about your plans for this new, new venture of yours. Mm -hmm. I am very happy to be here today. Um, I was thrilled to be named the new City Poet Laureate. And uh, I continue to do the work that I've been doing as a slam poet and a spoken word artist who um, one of the main goals is of, of interacting with the community is to engage in a civic-minded way. And Macundo came to be several years ago. Um, and those aren't my words. That is a mission statement okay, okay, that was okay, okay. created um, by Macundistas. Those are members of the Macundo Foundation founded by Sandra Cisneros. Exactly. It was actually founded right out of her kitchen. It started off with kitchen salons. She would open up her kitchen, invite friends and, and writers of the community in San Antonio, te Texas, and uh, they would write together. And uh, then they went on to establish a more structured collective. Right. And she's, uh, she and Macundo has inspired me so much that that's what I'm doing with the collective that I founded called La Palabra. The La word Palabra. is a woman a right. few years ago, or at least that's my goal, you know. So, but I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited to talk about poetry. There's so much going on all the time. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be able to participate in that. Uh, before we get into your your view, your your vision of the role of the poet laureate in Albuquerque. I'd love you to sort of tell our audience and our readers a little bit more about yourself. You're, uh, there's not much about you on the internet, about who you are and your life and poetry in general and where you came from and, and really what you hope to happen in the future. So I am from, I was born in Paramount, California. Uh, and we lived in the Long Beach and Los Angeles area, my family and I. Um, I have two younger brothers. And uh, we moved to New Mexico when I was about 12, a very formative year. And for me, um, and suddenly I was thrust into a, a small border town um, from L.A., this metropolis, this yeah. sprawling city near the beach to landlocked desert border town, uh, Deming, New Mexico, which what is right Deming? there by Columbus. And yeah. then you got Palomas, Mexico. Yeah. So it was there that I graduated from high school no. and um, kind of traveled um, north. Uh, lived in Las Cruces for a while and found my way to Albuquerque. I've been now here in Albuquerque. Let's see, my daughter's 12. So I've been here a little over 13 years and been active in the poetry scene a little under 10 years. So it was only a couple of years that I was here trying to find my way that <clears throat> I fell upon the slam community. Uh, uh, and it changed my life. Is that when you met Don McIver, who incidentally is the poetry curator at the New Mexico Mercury. We're honored to have him do that uh, role for us. Uh, is that when you met him? Uh, uh, yes, I did. Actually, I met Don McIver via Mary Mae Moffitt, who was my very first ever poetry teacher. I was a waitress. I was a single mama. I was slanging eggs at some diner, and I thought, it's best that I get back to school. So I did. Um, I was on a long hiatus after I had my daughter. Uh, when I returned to school, it was, uh, you know, CNN, but TBI at the time. That's how long ago it was. Right, right, right. And um, I was a journalism major. 
But uh, I switched over to creative writing with an emphasis on poetry eventually and communication studies. But my first poetry teacher was Mary Mae Moffitt. She's still a very good friend of mine and a mentor. In fact, at the uh, Poet Laureate um, ceremony recently, I guess now it's been several weeks, she wrote a poem and introduced me. I, I asked if, if she could do that for me. And, and it was uh, very meaningful that she be there. And um, in fact, just recently I was at her house. She opened up her home to poets and we hung out on, on her yard and drank wine and read poetry and, <laughs> and got bit by mosquitoes. And the, the Oklahoma State Poet Laureate was there, Nathan Brown, oh, wow. um, among several luminary poets uh, here in Albuquerque. But it was through Mary Mae Moffitt that I met Don McIver because it was an intro to poetry class that I had been enrolled in. And uh, the syllabus required that I go to a live community reading. And of course, I had written one poem. So I had one poem. Um, and I went out to Central Avenue um, at uh, RB Winning Coffee Company. Um, Central Avenue was hosted at that time by Dale Harris. Oh. Um, and I read my poem and I was shaking and I was nervous. I'm pretty sure I covered my face with the paper. Um, but nonetheless, Don McIver was there and he handed me, came up to me and handed me a flyer. I'll never forget this. And um, he was just, you know, kind of punchy Don McIver and, and really welcoming and friendly and said, come to this, it's called Poetry and Beer. And I thought, what a beautiful marriage, Poetry and Beer, I shall go. <laughs> and so I went to the distillery that following Wednesday, um, only a couple of days later, and that's where Poetry and Beer used to be hosted. Now it's at Blackbird Bouvet Bar and Grill uh, downtown. Oh, right and so I went, and at that time then I had three poems that I had ever writ. So I had three poems, which was great because Islam is three rounds. Mm. So I signed up for it and uh, I, and I know that my my first slam, I don't remember all of the participants, but I do remember that Ken Rodriguez was in the slam. And I just finished reading Ken Rodriguez um, in an anthology in Maramay's class. Yeah. So I was kind of starstruck. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I made it to the second round. And that was it. It had me hooked. So from then on, I started attending regularly um, poetry and beer, and then branched out to other slams. There was a really uh, um, dynamic slam that used to be hosted at uh, the Blue Dragon, oh, yeah. also near the university area, Un mm -hmm. University of New Mexico. And it was just a hot spot um, for, for poets and very welcoming. And uh, so I went to that, um, and, and that's no longer there, but we have slams almost weekly um, in various venues throughout the city. Um, but that's how I got, got started. And of course, Don MacGyver, um, you know, he's such a, he's such a welcoming fellow. So how could you not want to participate in ABQ slams? So, you know, this, this role of poet laureate, you know, it's, it has, it has many different aspects to it, I would think, and many different possibilities attached to it. If you're the national poet laureate, you tend to sort of hang out at the Library of Congress, I think. And so. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but in, in, uh, uh, up in Santa Fe, when, uh, Arthur Z and and uh, Joan Logie ran it. They ran. Joan was you know every day there was a reading. There was you know, this huge kind of ecumenical thing. It didn't matter what you were doing or how good a performer you were or not. There was she was just constantly running things. And it was great. And 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 Akeem's been the same way. I think he's concentrated a whole lot on schools and other things too, which is very 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 important because there's so much talent and there's this awful view of poetry as being an elitist enterprise which of course is the last thing it is but mm -hmm. so what could you tell our audience what you want to be as as a poet laureate and how you want this this social world to operate here over your neck over your year in office so I think that's it's a broad question. Sure. Um, I've got um, you know almost 10 years behind <clears throat> me in um, uh, experience in working within the community as a poet um, and advocating for the literary arts, which does a whole slew of things and empowers a lot of people in various ways. Um, so what I'd like to do is kind of talk about the things that I've already been doing, that I continue to do so. And it's like a hydra, right? You, you, you cut off a head and seven sprout. So that's always that's always happening, you know? So yeah, I, I often go in, into the schools. Recently, I was in the Cesar Chavez Community uh, Charter School recruiting for Voces, which is a summer intensive writing program. It's hosted at the National Hispanic Cultural Center. It'll and start- you're gonna do that. Yes, yeah. and that'll start June 2nd for a whole month. You know, we wanna go into the schools and convince young people why they wanna come to summer schools. 
so to speak. Um, but uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for, for young people. And again, I was at uh, Robert F. Kennedy Charter High School recruiting, presenting, reading poems, talking about the program, um, working with the students collectively and then individually. Um, I used to work at RFK for a couple of years. I was the poet in residence. So it's not foreign to me to be in the classroom, uh, especially with middle school kiddos and high school kiddos, but also elementary school kids. Um, I've done this before, and I, I will continue to work with, with elementary school age children in the Parelas uh, community. Mm -hmm. We did a, a kind of connection between the elders who used to attend Parelas, because Parelas is a very old neighborhood, and Coronado Elementary School is a very old school. So we connected the elders who still live in the neighborhood mm -hmm. with the current third graders mm -hmm. there at Parelas. And now it's a dual... Uh, language language immersion school. At that time, though, the elders weren't allowed to speak Spanish. So the, the, the students were just like, wow, you couldn't speak Spanish? Let, tell me about that. And so they connected um, and the, the young students interviewed the elders and then created poetry. And then there was this presentation, the celebration of the Barelas community. So that's the kind of work that I like to do. I continue to do so. I travel to Deming. Um, annually, uh, there's a, a school out there called Cesar Chavez Charter, and we do work there with with the high school students. Usually, we travel in a pack. Poets will, you know, stuff stuff themselves into a car and travel down there, and then and present poetry and workshops, facilitate workshops. Always with the outcome that students are able to uh, read aloud uh, what they worked on to their peers, to their teachers, to their family, to their community members. That's always. That's always the outcome, so that they share um, their their stories and uh, their voices and all the literary poetic elements that they discover along the way. So I do a lot of work with the youth. Um, I'm very excited that Voices is about, is about to start. I've, I've been a part of Voices at some capacity for the last eight years, um, and this will be the first time that I, I have the honor of, of being one of the lead facilitators and programmers. Mm -hmm. And I get to work alongside with Damien Flores, um, and he, he's a teacher at NACA and, and an amazing poet and slam poet and, and community uh, member, and Hakeem Bellamy, including Carlos Contreras and Colin Dials, Hazel Baker, mm -hmm. and a slew of amazing people that will be coming in to share their knowledge with the students. Um, that being said, I also like to create non-traditional spaces. I founded La Palabra, The Word is a Woman, in, several years ago. Um, and it happened by happenstance. We were having such a great time. We were, we were, we were doing a workshop at uh, the National Hispanic Cultural Center, and it was for Women in Creativity Series. It's an annual event that's hosted every March. And uh, I worked with a, a group of women we met for about a month and uh, I led a workshop and I thought, we're having so much fun, we should not stop this. Hey, you want to continue? Ladies, yes. Okay, let's do so. So now, because I'm so inspired by Sandra Cisneros and the Macondo Foundation, I host a lot of kitchen salons out of my home. So I open up my house mm -hmm. and we hang out in, you know, my kitchen and, and we potluck and, and we, you know, we, we eat and, you know, sometimes sip on wine or drink dark beer or coffees, and we write together. Um, I also host a lot of traveling poets. As a slam poet, we're couch surfers. Um, it's a wonderful network across the country. I had Princess McDowell come in recently. Wow. She's a um, queer African-American poet that's astounding from Dallas. She came in. Deanna O'Keen, she's an artist that's based in California, and she does art journaling. Mm -hmm. So we incorporated a, a poetic uh, prompt into it, too. And... Um, the point behind that is just creating safe spaces uh, for creative expression and sustaining them um, in non-traditional uh, environments. And La Palabra is really one of the mission statements behind La Palabra is to do so for young women and women so that it is a safe space in which they can talk about uh, issues, you know, women's issues and, and feel like it's... Um, that they are not going to be chastised and and can really create this open environment. That's that's one of the many seeds behind um, La Palabra. The word is a woman. So I want to this. I'm going to answer your question. <laughs> I want to continue doing these these things in the in the community. And the poet laureate ship has opened up even more um, doors and resources to 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 continue promoting. Poetry, poetry writing, poetry reading, workshops, um, and community engagement. 
as you know, I'm sure, uh, Albuquerque is a place that is, is, as we've said, rich, rich with writers and, and rich with poets. All you have to do is look at the Mercury. Mm -hmm. um, we know that uh, that a, you know, a good number are, you know, have have jobs and you know, stuff at, at uh, academic institutions and other things. But there are, as as money has come in more and more to play, uh, and publishers have been have been dying out. Mm -hmm. And popular venues for all kinds of writers and readers have been almost washed away in uh, in a kind of uh, well, I guess in the recession of 2008 and even before. I know that there are many, many people here who want a voice again, who want to be able to to participate, who want to have an audience, who want to uh, who want to read, who want to be a, a part of a citywide community. Is there anything that that the role of uh, of of uh, the poet laureate can do to facilitate a sort of bringing together of a great many different kinds of writers and to try and give them a voice again, which they have lost. Yeah, I think one of the roles uh, for the city poet laureate is to be a type of ambassador um, for poetry in general, but for the poets of that city, um, and to again to create and sustain places for reading, for readership, for audience, for audienceship, but also for publications, um, whether they be online, digital uh, publication, and or independent presses, small independent presses, or self-publication, self-publishing, because um, that's really, <clears throat> That's really sometimes the only place that we can get published. It's hard to break uh, maybe these big publishing houses or maybe the, the halls of academia. And so um, by honoring our local publications and submitting there and um, promoting, promoting our local publications, I think that does um, a service to getting voices out um, for various writers, whatever genre it might be. Yeah. Um, my good friend Katrina Garaccio just founded a, a small press, and a lot of it is through things that can be accessed online by anybody. Mm. Um, but she's got a very structured format, and it's called Sewing with Elephants Publication. Um, and what she likes to do is, is uh, go out into the community, table a lot at various readings, um, but also solicit submissions, um, whether it be poetry or memoir or fiction and prose. Yeah. Um, so that's just one of the, you know, um, the movers and shakers in that arena. But um, I think by supporting one another, supporting venues, uh, supporting readings, um, when I say support, trying to go out to them. Uh, yeah. You can't be everywhere all no. at once, no. but at least uh, name dropping is a very powerful thing, you know, or at least, hey, here's this, the, this is the way we promote here in the city of Albuquerque. Here's a flyer or here's some social media. Here's a link. Go to this. Tell the young people to go out um, across the, I think that the, the writers here are so diverse, uh, like you, you said before, and I think a lot of it comes down to supporting one another mm -hmm. so that they remain viable. Um, but there are different avenues to get the word out as far as spoken word and, um, and, and page poetry for publication. Um, and so the Poet Laureate ship, I think, is, is an ambassador for that. Um, and that's what I hope to continue to do, that work that Hakeem Bellamy has done um, so wonderfully in his first two years as Poet Laureate. Just the other day, no, it was yesterday, uh, I sat down with Cel San Sanchez, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, you know they're getting ready to put together data and information and, 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 and feedback uh, from writers about a state Poet Laureate post. Um, and so that would be great to see that happen a state poet laureate and still maintaining city poet laureates because New Mexico is a big state with a lot of land and sometimes we've got, you know, these these populations that are massed in various cities, but we are a diverse state. Um, and I think a state poet laureate and several city poet laureate posts is, is a wonderful combination to continue to promote all the voices um, of writers here in New Mexico. So I suppose if you are the national poet laureate, and uh, uh, you have a, a post at the Library of Congress, you have probably many millions of dollars at your disposal. I am pretty sure that the Poet Laureate of Albuquerque or Poet Laureate of Santa Fe has no money at all to do anything. <laughs> who, who selects you? Who actually, who do you work for? I mean, are you a city employee or, or 
How does that work? I don't think anybody probably knows, and I was wrong. You have a two-year term, right, as opposed to one. Yes, okay. So I'll tell you what I know, um, and I'll start from the beginning. Um, so first, it's asked that you be nominated by community, a community member or community members right. uh, to apply for the city <clears throat> poet laureate. And uh, it wasn't my intent to do so. Uh, in fact, I nominated someone else. Uh, and then I be I I began to receive nominations. Um, you're, you're notified via email. And um, you're notified who, who nominates you. And they were people that I admire and respect very much um, within Albuquerque, the community within Albuquerque. And um, so I decided to apply. And um, it's a very democratic process. The application is pretty lengthy. You submit a manuscript and you submit a CV and you talk about the things that you do within Albuquerque as, as a writer, a poet. And um, so I applied and submitted that. And what happens is that a selection committee reviews all applicants. The selection committee is also, um, it also must apply for that position. And they are selected by the Poet Laureate Board. Oh, okay. So this, the Poet Laureate Board is comprised of various people um, of organizations in Albuquerque. Everything from the National Hispanic Cultural Center to the Harwood Art Center um, to affiliated with CNM, um, etc. And so there, this board then accepts applications for the selection committee selects them, then the selection committee selects the city poet laureate. Um, there's a stipend that's involved and it, it's funded through these various organizations <laughs> and um, it's metered out over the two years. And so it's a small stipend and so all the budgets, uh, you know, you do during the, during the application process, um, it is asked that you submit a, uh, a proposal for a project that you would like to work on for, for the two years. And uh, so that's also taken into consideration by the selection committee. And uh, when you do propose the project, you uh, propose it under two different types of budgets because monies are fluid and, 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 and it's, that's already established from the beginning. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. So I'm getting ready to do some pre-planning for the project that I proposed, which is working with youth, which is pairing them with mentors here in Albuquerque. And um, and, and the end result will be a publication and, and a reading in which the community can celebrate these young writers and these experienced writers that, um, you know, want to engage with with youth. And I'd like to do that twice, one each year. I don't mean to, to, uh, to pursue this too much longer but in other words there's no big budget behind this office you don't have a lot of money to work with you don't have a lot of, uh, of, of resources you're just out there basically inventing the role and each time it's done by a laureate the role gets bigger and there's there's precedent but there's no real institutional financial support is that right Okay, well, check this out. So Hakeem Bellamy was a very, very busy, busy poet laureate doing awesome things these last two years. He actually proposed uh, to the city and the mayor that there be some monies within the line item, a line item uh, within the budget for the city. Good. Um, and that was actually just approved by the city council. Good. So now we are awaiting it to be signed off by the mayor. Um, should that kick in, and I believe it's kicking in, it will be in July. Wonderful. Um, and that's a stipend that will happen for the first year and then the second year. Right. Um, at this time, um, I can't really say what the amount is, but it's it's a little bit more substantial than what the other monies there were there that were kind of fluid and 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 looked upon like, hey, can we get the money for for this art for this position? Because as you know. Um, you know, funding for arts is sometimes not prioritized, and that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, and we all do this on a, a shoestring budget or nothing at all. La Palabra works on zero monies. Yeah. Um, the only monies that we ever ask is that uh, if people come to workshops when there's a traveling poet, can you can you donate some money? And usually the community comes together. But we're, we're having poets uh, stay with us, stay with other poets in safe places, and, and then um, having them, you know, read at various readings in their small honorariums that are kind of put together to make, um, you know, a type of fee, 
a, a payment for for a writer that comes through. So again, we're always working on that type of budget. But that was really great of Joaquin to think about what what do we want for the next poet laureate. Um, and I want to continue that work, too, that he's done to make sure that that continues to happen within the city's budget. That's just wonderful. I didn't know anything about that. I uh, I should have, but I didn't. I'm really happy. I hope that works. That would be great. I mean, you know, this is this is the life of what, this is the life of the poet, right? Mm-hmm. Hand to mouth, scrambling, mm-hmm. trying to do something. But it would be great to have some institutional support for this. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, in uh, 2016, when, when this rule is over for you, what uh, what do you want to pass on to the next laureate? What what would you like? Uh, I mean, your legacy personally, but but the legacy of the office. Mm-hmm. What would you like it to be? Uh, where do you want it to go? Uh, well, this transference of um, poet laureate has already started, right? So the work that Hakim has, uh, has done has been very uh, influential in the things that I want to continue to do so. And um, Hakim has been a colleague for a while. We've been on several City Slam teams together, a peer and a friend. And so the type of work we do is similar. That being said, uh, I that kind of civic engagement on part of the poet laureate um, is something that I'd like to see continue to happen. Writers are very different from one another. Writing can be a very solitary act, and it needs to be. Mm-hmm. But also collaborative writing and writing within the community, I think, is necessary, too, especially if you want to be an ambassador for poetry in a sense that says, hey, let's write. It's not esoteric. It's not so academic. You can't break down the walls. It's very empowering. Um, you know, I quoted Raul Salinas in my I don't call it a speech. It's called a love story to Albuquerque. Whenever I accepted the poet laureate at the ceremony, that uh, poetry is found in the streets. Poesia está en la calle. And so it's everywhere. And so it's our job to say, hey, look, it, it's everywhere. It's in our songs. It's in our songwriting. It's in our story and our oral, oral traditions. It's in the barbershops. You know, it's in the laundromats. It's in the taquerias. And yes, it's in the classrooms. You know, so I see that as my role. And I see that as something that I'd like to pass down, down, pass to the next Poet Laureate. Though... I couldn't see that not happening. Like you said, here in Albuquerque, we have such a vibrant community of writers. Um, And uh, I think that the next Poet Laureate is going to be engaged in that way. Um, And so if anything, the the projects that I want to work on, I hope that they continue to work. So I will make sure to hopefully have a component that is sustainable so that these projects can continue to happen um, and that they can be viable for the next poet laureate should they want to take on those projects as well. It's a, you know, might it might compound to be a lot of work, but yeah. I think it always is. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's that's kind of what how I how I see it. I'm so happy to hear that 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 you think like I do, and and like a number of other people do that poetry belongs in the world all the time. It is in the world already all the time. That it doesn't that it's had some terrible curse placed upon it. I'm not sure by who, but that it's suddenly it's it's not for everyone. That's a total lie, of course. That it doesn't exist in in the world as we know it. That it's a rarefied experience. It's total baloney, as we all as we know. Uh, at the Mercury, uh, Don McIver and and Vanilla Aragon, who's our publisher and myself, mm-hmm. uh, have been trying to to integrate poetry into our regular flow of our copy uh, mm-hmm. because that's where it belongs in the regular world. So I'm really happy to hear you say that. So um, what what can be um, what can be done to to sort of break down those old and I think really artificial walls between different genres of poetry and different age groups, and different genders and different cultures. Mm-hmm. I mean it would be wonderful to have, you know, a real a real community again here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm sure again is the right word even. But uh, but is that possible to do? Um, I think so. I think it's happening now. I think it's been happening. Um, slam poetry, uh, it's so magical because of its accessibility. Yeah. Um, and so we have a lot of <clears throat> slams and open mics um, that happen uh, every week, sometimes twice a week. 
um, by supporting other venues, however, that aren't slam centric, yes. um, then we're we're able to bridge this idea of what academic and page poetry is versus spoken word. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's when you find this cohesiveness that that happens. For instance, like I said, I was just at Mary Mae Moffitt's house, and there you had the Oklahoma State Poet Laureate in attendance, um, and you had uh, Tony Maris in attendance, um, and you had slam poets like myself and Rich Boucher there. Uh, Damien Flores, Don MacGyver, and you had um, a very diverse um, um, collection of, of writers there. And so I think by breaking down those walls, then, you know, where there aren't these, uh, there's not a segregation, or you're not differentiating what's this kind of poetry and what's that kind of poetry and what's this kind of poetry. And really it becomes all just storytelling. Um, I think that's where it really brings together a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the writers here in this community. And then the writers are able to open up these forums for those who are interested in becoming writers or who just want to come and enjoy and, and listen to, to poetry and creative writing. Um, and I think that's where you get a community. Uh, just recently, you know, I've been able to teach at the University of New Mexico and uh, through the Chicano Studies program. And I found another community there. And um, I get to work alongside other poets like Levi Romero um, and, and various writers, Kathy Ariano. And um, so we go back and forth. It's very fluid. Is it a, are, we, are we spoken word artists? Are we storytellers? Are we page poets? Is this academia? Is this cultural studies? Uh, we don't really have to make those uh, distinctions, I don't think. Um, and so that's that's where you get community. And I think it's already been happening. I've never seen otherwise, to tell you the truth. You know, and um, I've been engaged in those types of conversations before, and not just within the city of Albuquerque, but as a slam poet who travels a lot extensively. Um, you know, and I'm, I've seen a lot of slam poets either be very content with just kicking back at a bar or, or a coffee shop and go and others go on and and. and Enroll in graduate programs and MFA programs and publish a lot or be okay with, uh, you know, being very ephemeral. And so um, I think that that's the way it is here in Albuquerque, too. I think that, that the, the community might be uh, more of an undercurrent if you don't know where to look. And that's why it's our job to say, hey, it's here, 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 and here, 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 and here, 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 because it's really all over the place. Well, this has been wonderful. I, <laughs> I really enjoyed it hugely. I, I kind of wanted to get... To, uh, to have to have you read some poems, but maybe you can do that later on down the road. We're kind of we're kind of uh, running a little short for time, but thank you so much for being here with thank us. And it's been a joy. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm very, very, very happy to be a part of the Mercury family, and so is my daughter, who, by the way, is sitting in the next room. <laughs> and that's what you do when you're a writer and a parent. <laughs> you know, you supply your daughter with art and projects to do while mama talks about poetry, but she also writes as well. So, you know, thank you for, for having me and having my family here with with you all.